Hi, this is Matt, a uh, second year med student here, and this is part three of Autonomic Nervous Systems. We're going to be doing the uh, cholinergic slash parasympathetic system drugs here. So uh, I'm using pages 233 and 234. It shouldn't take that long. There's not a lot to draw for this one, although you will see this creeper behind me who is muscarinic antagonist man, and we'll be talking about him later. But uh, right now, let's just do... Um, Let's just jump right in it. I, and I even use a lot what's already in first aid, so it, it shouldn't be that bad. But the um, first ones are the direct cholinergic agonists. Okay, So they're going to either directly um, stimulate the muscarinic receptor or they're going to um, supplement it. And we got examples of, of both of those. And the way I remember this um, is I say uh, uh, Beth... Uh, Beth caused my ptosis, and that's ptosis spelled with a P. That's right, P is in ptosis. And uh, so Beth caused my ptosis. And why would she cause your ptosis? Because these are uh, parasympathetic stimulators. So the idea that like, it's not sympathetic, right? Beth caused my ptosis, because sympathetic response, you know, your eyelids open up there. So Beth caused my ptosis, and Bethanicol. And I like the one that they used, uh, you know, bowel and uh, bladder for bethanicol. And in terms of just remembering um, that it's a surgical one, um, you just memorize it, I suppose. But uh, the the thane in there it got me thinking about halothane, like a like a the surgical uh, gas there. So um, for uh, anesthesia, so bethanicol, and it's like bethanicol exiting the e there exiting. Thane, Beth exiting Thanacol. It's not that great, but I mean, it's the only one for the surgery that's on the direct agonist. But Bethanacol, um, I think maybe Halothane, something with surgery, so it's like post operative recovery. Carbacol. Uh, Carbacol, uh, I like the one that they use, like Carbacol, carbon copy. It's, it's, like, a, it's like directly giving um, the chemical directly mimics um, acetylcholine. Um, but another way I also look at it is carbs. Carbsacol, why carbs? Carbs, sugar, you use it in glaucoma. So someone you know has diabetes is at risk for glaucoma. So carbacol, carbsacol, and uh, so that's that. And then, uh, and obviously it talks about pap, you know, pupillary contraction and intraocular relief, intraocular pressure, and we'll go into those mechanisms more when we do the specifically the glaucoma talk, which will be the next one. But glaucoma, carbsacol, and then pilocarpin. Um, it talks about pillows and like you're drooling, you're tearing, you're sweating on the pillow, and that's fine. But you should really also, why is that? Because you have such a parasympathetic surge. And that's because the pillow carpin is powerful. So you could do powerful pillow carpin. Um, I also like uh, the PIL, though, the PIL that's there. I think a pupil of carpin. Uh, so pupil of carpin, uh, powerful pillow carpin. It's, it's stimulate. you use it to treat an emergent glaucoma. This is the emergency one. It's like the big gun. That's why it's such a parasympathetic surge. That's the drooling, sweating, uh, whatever, lacrimating on your on your uh, pillow there. It's because it's such a surge, and you're going to use that to counteract uh, like a, an emergency glaucoma, which will be the closed angle one uh, that we'll talk about later. So, and the last one's meth meth methacholine, and I think methacholine measures. What are we measuring? Why are we using methacholine for measuring? Uh, because it's that asthma test, right? You give the you give the constrictor. It's a short-term agonist, and then uh, you you see how they they respond on the on the challenge. So um, that's meth methacholine. Methacholine measures. So that was the direct one. Beth caused my ptosis. Now the indirect ones. Um, you know, if you like memorizing endings and stuff, the stigmines there, the stigmines is a big clue that this is acetylcholinesterase, acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. So uh, if you can remember, if you see stigmines, that's a good one. So how do I do this? Neostigmine, neostigmine. How do I remember that surgery? So I say that the, the stig, if my stigmine is just my suffix, right, for this section, then I got to do something with the prefix to remember what it does. So the neo, for me, the NEO stands for now exiting operations. Now exiting the operation. This is a surgical one again. It's recovering from surgery. Now exiting the operation, neostigmine. And uh, what's important to, for, for this uh, section is that they try and make a distinction between peripheral and central. So um, 
if uh, the surgery one, again, it's like the bowel and bladder. It's just like the thanacol, so it, it doesn't need to be um, doesn't need to be central because we're just doing the bowel and bladder. Uh, just like the thanacol, it's just a different way of approaching it. It's just an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. And then uh, what do we got? We got uh, ed edrophonium, edrophonium, and pyridostigmine, right? So the ways I remember this, I try and link those together, so I'm going to know those two together. And so edrophonium is, called, is phoning it in. You know when you're phoning it in, you're not really doing a great job. It's phoning it in because it's short-acting. So edrophonium is short-acting, is, is, uh, short it's phoning it in for the uh, myasthenia gravis uh, test. Um, so erdrophonium, phoning it in. And then pyridostigmine. So again, I got stigmine. I know it's a cholinesterase inhibitor. Pyrid, pyrid, pyrid. I think of pyramids. Pyramids of stigmine, as in this has been around as long as the pyramids. It's long acting. Pyramidostigmine has been around since the time of the pyramids. Pyramidostigmine, long acting. Pyridostigmine, and there you go. And then now the last two here, physostigmine, physo, phys physiology. This thing affects everything. Physostigmine. It's CNS. It's PNS. It's the whole thing, because it's important for atropine uh, 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 poisoning. So, um, if physostigmine, you use it uh, to, to, counteract, um, to, to, to counteract everything. And when we talk about atropine, you'll see it has central effects too. So, it's like it's got, physostigmine has to affect the whole physiology. And then donepazil, uh, donepazil, I just think don't forget Alzheimer's. Uh, don't, donepazil, don't forget Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any of the endings that we remember. But um, if they asked something about, you know, I don't know, maybe some, I don't know how this would present actually if it's an Al's, I but it's, it's, centr it's central. So it has something to do with the Alzheimer's central effect uh, of it. It's donepazil, don't forget Alzheimer's. Don't forget uh, donepazil, so and Alzheimer's. So that's, that's that. And then it has a talk about the, <clears throat> you know, the parasympathetic surge there which, I mean, if you understand parasympathetic sympathetic systems, what they do, I mean, if you didn't memorize the dumbbells, you would just interpret that based on how you know the receptors work. And then uh, muscarinic antagonists. So this is uh, this pirate looking guy over here. Well, you, uh, so how do I construct this? So um, first of all, um, anything, the way I remember something with trope or scope uh, helps me think of muscarinic antagonists. Muscarinic antagonist, and I and this is gonna be sound stupid, but um, if it's a muscarinic antagonist, it's a bully, right? So the way I remember is like you had this muscarin receptor skipping along, and then it was tripped by the antagonist. So tripping, skipping, and then as it's falling, it goes no, and that's the O because it's trope and scope. Anyway, or you can just memorize the list, but uh, trope and scope are our main are our main roots that we're gonna be using for most of them. But how do I remember who goes where, what they do? So um, because they're all going to be counteracting parasympathetics at certain points. <clears throat> so we start with um, the B there is in the brain. And uh, so that's Ben's, Ben's tropine. And uh, if you remember our striatal motor cortex, we mentioned that a little bit. If you remember, it's, the, uh, it's an acetylcholine an antagonist, right? And so we talked about how the caudate nucleus went to the substantia nigra and we could inhibit it. And uh, I mentioned in that video that I wasn't sure pill rolling or whatnot or whether it would help with the hypokinesia. I guess another section of first aid I saw that they say benztropine does not help the hypokinesia, but it actually does somehow affect the, the pill rolling uh, tremor, but that, uh, but even though it's centrally acting. So that's, that's kind of counterintuitive, but that's something to be aware of. So the benztropine though, it's gonna be the central one. It's in the brain, right? And we use bends, parking your bends. And the way I tried now, I'm gonna remember that it's the rolling thing as I'm using, I'm using <clears throat> I'm using my hand to grip, you know, I grip the wheel when I'm parking my bends. So like, it's like, it's just having to do with the, it's a peripheral thing, not a, not a hypokinetic effect. I need, I need my hand to grip the wheel, I can't be doing the tremor, you know. So that's how I'm thinking about it. Anyway, uh, so um, moving down, you can see his face, right? But there's something missing in his face. Uh, you can't see his eyes, and it's because it's blocked by the hat. So what does hat stand for? Well, hat stands for the three muscarinic antagonists that block the eyes. So you could draw any hat you like, um, but I, uh, so we got uh, homotropine, tropocamide, and atropine. So if you notice the H1, the A1, the T1, and um, those affect the eye. 
And atropine would be definitely be affecting the eye since that one affects everything. It's central and peripheral. And we go after atropine with physostigmine because we need to block it in the whole body. So uh, atropine, uh, homotropine, tropocamide. So they all have the tropes in them, right? And you say, well, I don't know how I'm going to remember tropocamide. What if I confuse that with teotropium that I'm seeing on this list? So ipotropium and teotropium are respiratory. So I kind of use my eye here as my trachea and my T's as my two lungs. So the two T's are the teotropium, teotropium, and the uh, ipotropium. And that's the respiratory one. And you can use that in uh, COPD and asthma. And then, uh, and then over here, I kind of have uh, my S. And I try to draw that where like the stomach would be. Why stomach? Why an S? S stomach. Scopolamine. Scopolamine does motion sickness. You know, you vomit when you have motion sickness or, or any kind of uh, nausea. So scopolamine, I mean, keeping in mind that it's actually centrally acting, right? But it, S stomach, thinking of motion sickness, scopolamine. Then the G here, which goes attached, it's attached to my S because that's like the duodenum, right? The four parts of the duodenum is a G. And um, that's, that, that is a gastrointestinal, is my uh, glyco, glycopyrrolate. So glycopyrrolate is gastro and it's respiratory. So you could use G as sort of like cartilaginous rings here, or it actually inhibits the glands. So it's like G is going down the trachea, but it doesn't go to the, the, uh, the alveoli, because obviously gland tissue stops there histologically according to board. So anyway, so glands stop there, so that would be more centrally located. Right? So it stops the glands from secreting, and it stops, uh, and it's used to treat ulcers. Um, because if we think about, let's see, M3, right, the catch-all, the glands, it, 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 in digestion, parasympathetics, it would promote acid production, so peptic ulcers. You could use this glycopyrrolate, which uh, would have a gastrointestinal effect and, and block the effect of parasympathetics on the gut, which would help with ulcers, and it can help with the lungs by stopping uh, gland secretion. And then down here, um, sorry, I'm in a room, but the O is meant to represent the bladder, so my, egg, my legs are a little bit thing, but O, it's a bladder down there. Why? Because oxybutatine is used um, to reduce urgency uh, and uh, reduce bladder spasms, so it kind of paralyzes that deducer there. And um, and what did that? So we got the brain, the block, the blocking of the eyes, the hat, iotropium, teotropium, scopolamine, glycopyrrolate, and then oxybutyrin, and that's our muscarinic antagonist, man. And then it just describes atropine. But once again, if you think about every system and you think what parasympathetics do versus sympathetic sympathetics, then uh, you should be able to deduce the effects of atropine. And um, no, but, but when, do, when do we use atropine? This is a good point. When do we use atropine? So if atropine is a muscarinic antagonist, right? It's got the trope in there. It's a bully, atropine. We use that for that organophosphate toxicity where it will, um, organophosphates will destroy the acetylcholinesterase enzyme. So the atropine being like the mega muscarinic blocker is saying, okay, you're releasing all of this acetylcholine uh, and it's gonna trigger all of this stuff. So if I can cover the muscarinic receptors, then I can at least stop that action. And then the other drug that they mention is this pralidoxum. So if, I don't have a way yet of figuring that one out, but pralidoxum, right, is just gonna uh, just help upregulate the, uh, the, the presence of the, of the receptor there. Uh, I'm sorry, of the enzyme. It says it regenerates the uh, active enzyme. Oh, I think it kicks off the organophosphate. I don't know, we're gonna look into it. But anyway, why would you use that? And so if we kind of think about also, that's sort of like how we used, um, it, how we used that uh, phenyloxa, benzamine um, uh, for the uh, pheos, right? We had to kind of cover all of our receptors before we took out the pheo, or um, how we used phenytolamine for the MAOI inhibitor overdose, right? We had to kind of cover our receptors to prevent all that extra catecholamine being made by the, uh, from, that, from the inhibition of the uh, MAOI. So um, same concept, too much, too much acetylcholine everywhere, need to cover my receptors. I use atropine because it can go everywhere. So um, I think that's it. It's a, it's a nice short video this time. And uh, next, it'll just be uh, the glaucoma, kind of going over the physiology and how these drugs uh, play into it. So thanks.